Hello, this is Professor Kinney, and today we're looking at creating screen captures. It's often important to record, uh, document aspects of your process as a designer, especially when you're trying to pass that information along to a collaborator. And screen grabs are a great way of capturing activity on your computer. Probably the simplest way to engage with that is to use a keyboard shortcut. One of them that I find particularly useful is Command Shift 4. And you'll notice that as we zoom in there, you can see this registration mark. That's a cropping icon and it gives you a pixel count on the screen. And it allows you to specifically capture an area of that screen. And it does that. And it generates a generic file. You can see here picture one and picture two. It generates them with a generic file name in a PNG or portable network graphics format and it will label them sequentially. If I did another one, that one would be called picture three and so on. If we double click that, you can see the area of the screen that I had captured. Now we can take this PNG file from the preview software, which is kind of a universal browser for all kinds of file formats, and we could then save it out in another file format that would be usable by other software. But I'm just going to take this and throw it into Photoshop for post-processing. So I'm going to drag it to the Photoshop icon. And there's our screen capture. It can often get quite confusing with a screen capture because you'll often have the window elements repeated. So it's difficult to know what's the active window and what's just a picture of a window. Now, I want to process this a little bit, so I'm going to use the crop function in Photoshop. And choose the crop tool. And generate a cropping boundary. Unfortunately, I set my cropping tool to a fixed amount. Go back here, say don't crop. I'll just leave the cropping data blank. Otherwise, it keeps these proportions. As far as resolution is concerned, um, a screen capture is captured at the resolution of your screen at the time of capture. And so it would be in your best interests if you want to maintain the highest level of quality that your screen be set to a fairly high resolution to begin with. And in the Macintosh, that can be found in the System Preferences panel under Displays, where you have a variety of horizontal and vertical pixel counts. You'd want to choose the highest number with the highest hertz value. This is the refresh value of the screen. Well, given that, we've got our cropping tool. I've cleared all the data out of there. I could also have used that clear button as well. I now crop that image. Double click it to commit to that cropping. I haven't quite got it all the way, so I'm going to trim a little bit more off the the other edge there, double click it. Now, I may want to do a little bit of post-processing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the image canvas size, and I'm going to increase the size of that image a little bit. To the left, sorry, this determines the distribution of extra space. I'm going to work in inches because I'm old school. Um, and instead of it being 2.3, I'm going to make the width uh, 
In this case, I'll add the dimensions and distribute them in this fashion. Um, I'm going to make the width 3 inches and make the height 7 and a half. Then if I click OK, you'll see that it's given me that extra real estate around my graphic as I asked for it. Now what I want to do at this point is use what's called the magic wand tool. And that allows me to select pixels of a similar color. It's very easy here because it's all white background. I can click here. You'll notice it's actually selecting areas inside as well. If I switch up here under contiguous, that means command D to deselect, command D, deselect. With contiguous, the areas of white have to be touching. So you'll notice it's not selected any white text in here, but it has selected this little tiny bit in here. How do I subtract from an existing selection? Well, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool. And you'll notice these icons up here. Very much like the Pathfinder tool, it works in the same fashion. This one here allows me to subtract from an existing selection. So I can use this, draw a marquee here, and you'll notice that it's subtracted this from the overall selection. Now that I've isolated this area, I'm going to invert, oops, command Z. Uh, let's do, there we go. Um, I'm going to inverse the selection, which actually means whatever was selected becomes deselected, and that which was not selected becomes selected. It just kind of flips the order. And then what I'm going to do is from the layers palette, I'm going to cut this out, just use a keyboard command, Command X, and then Command V to paste it back into its own layer. Now that this exists in its own layer against a white background, what I can do is create a special effect, like a drop shadow. Determine the angle of that drop shadow. It adds the drop shadow, and you can see it here along the edge. It just helps to enhance the graphic, allowing it to pop out against that background. There are other things that we could choose to do as well. I could select perhaps this area here and then. I'm going to subtract, using the subtract function, I'm going to subtract this area in here. And instead of a rectangular tool, I'm going to use an ellipse. And we'll start that It's not working so well. Yeah, I'm going to start it about here. And what I'm doing is just creating a little area here. And I'm going to say, in this area, on a
grab launch the grab software and with the grab software under capture we can capture a selection just like we did with command shift 4 capture the contents of an entire active window capture the entire screen or do a timed screen in which case you get this little camera and when we launch that camera let's get into Photoshop and let's say we wanted to show um, the new adjustment layer for levels. We wanted to show where that was. It's always good to kind of rehearse where something is. And then we can say, okay, start the timer. We go layer, new adjustment layer, levels. Look at the little camera as it ticks the time away. And then you hear a camera shutter. And it takes a picture. And you can see inside here, there's the contents right here. Now look at the mumble jumbo behind it. There's a lot going on. Information overload. You're driving on the highway here. So this is one good uh, candidate for that kind of post-processing. First, let's save this. File, save as, and I'll just save that out on the desktop. and it's going to save it as a TIFF. So we save that. Therein lies the difference when you use the keyboard shortcuts. Um, you get a portable network graphic. When you use the actual grab software, you get a TIFF by default. Now, we have that TIFF file. There it is right there. Let's drop that into Photoshop and look at that. That's just frightening the amount of information that's there. So this is one of those times where it would be really handy to have a selection that kind of detailed where this was and set it apart from all the other noise in the background. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the rectangular marquee tool and this time I'm going to use the additive function right here. We're going to add to a selection. And I'm going to begin by, I want to include this. Start here. And we'll go all the way to here. And then I want to add this. So I'll add that. And then I want to add this. So I will include that as well. So in the same way, I will, I could copy this, I suppose. In which case, it's going to leave a copy of this behind. And then Command V. And we'll notice in the layers, We've got two versions. If I switch it off, we don't notice anything because there's a copy of it behind the other one. You see that? Command Z. What's important here is that, number one, I can select this area here and I can dampen that down. So Again, I can use an adjustment layer, layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll use hue and saturation again. Or let's just use a levels adjustment. And you notice that it's masking out the area of the menu. And let me do this adjustment. So there's our layers adjustment and let's just darken everything down so I don't think that's as effective as using the hue saturation adjustment 
but you can see there is a number of ways in which to tackle the problem of emphasis and de-emphasis. But, you know, this is helping t in some way to isolate those menus for us. And again, I would save that as a PSD file so that I could go back and make changes later on. And then, of course, I would flatten that and save out a probably a JPEG version of that as well for inclusion in my, uh, in my work. And so that concludes creating screen grabs. Thank you.